ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರ್ ಅಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅರ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಸೆಷನ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೂ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೂ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಆರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ವಿ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ can also be defined as the total quantity of motion associated with any moving body it is in general denoted by p and can be expressed as the product of mass and velocity so that is p is equal to m into v the velocity of the particle so p is a vector quantity that is linear momentum is a vector quantity and its direction is same as that of the velocity of the particle so therefore if mass of the object increases then momentum increases and if velocity increases then also the momentum increases so uh, the si unit of linear momentum is kg meter per second or newton second so to look at one simple example where a bicycle and a car both are moving with the same velocity in a particular direction so now the but they possess different momentum because the cycle has the less mass whereas the car has more mass though velocities are same their momentum will be different because of the difference in masses similarly if you take two cars one moving with 10 meter per second velocity another moving with 50 meter per second velocity then the car which is moving faster will have the more momentum when compared to a car which is moving slowly similarly uh, the concept of momentum can be understood as suppose if we have a car which is moving with uh, 10 meter per second collides with another object so whatever the momentum it is going to transfer it will have some impact whereas when the same car is moving with 50 meter per second and if it collides with another object then the amount of damage it can cause will be more so therefore the total quantity of motion associated with any body uh, is nothing but the amount of damage it can cause when it collides with another object so therefore if mass is more momentum is more if the velocity is more then also the momentum is more so now to understand the law of conservation of linear momentum suppose Uh, if f is the force acting on a particle then according to newton second law of motion we have force is equal to rate of change of momentum with respect to time that is dp divided by dt suppose if f is equal to 0 in that case dp by dt is equal to 0 therefore p is equal to constant so that means the law of conservation can be stated as using the above concept in the absence of any external force acting on a particle its momentum remain constant so it may be a single particle or a system of interacting particles if there is no external force acting on that system or that single particle then the total momentum of that particle will remain same in case of a system the total momentum of a system of particle will remain same if the external forces are not there so next consider a system of two particles okay consider a system of two particles let's say particles a and particle b let the external forces acting on them be zero there are no external forces acting on the system of two particles it's an isolated system let us take it as so let p1 be the momentum of the first particle here first particle refers to particle a let f21 be the force acting on it by the second particle or else the force exerted on it by the second particle second particle here refers to b then according to newton's second law of motion you can write that force f21 as dp1 divided by dt let it be equation 1 
Similarly, following the same thing, let P2 be the momentum of the second particle that is particle B and F12 be the force acting on it or exerted on it by the first particle. First particle means the particle A. Then according to Newton's second law of motion, F12 is equal to dP2 divided by dt where P2 is the momentum of second particle and F12 is the force acting on the second particle. So let this equation be 2. So now adding equations 1 and 2 you will get F21 plus F12 is equal to dP1 by dt plus dP2 by dt. Here it, the addition is vector addition. So let this expression be 3. So now from Newton's third law we have since there are no external force acting on it acting on the system of two particles A exerts a force on B similarly B exerts a force on E whatever the force exerted on each other these forces must follow Newton's third law that is the force exerted by A on B will be same as the force exerted with B on A so therefore F21 is equal to minus F12 here negative sign indicates that the forces F21 and F12 are oppositely directed. So therefore, uh, F21 plus F12 is equal to 0. So now, substituting this in equation 3, we will get dP1 by dt plus dP2 divided by dt is equal to 0. Since P1 and P2 are independent of each other, you can write that as d by dt of P1 plus P2. Here P1 plus P2 stands for the total momentum of the system of two particles. Therefore, the total momentum, if it is P, then dP by dt is equal to 0 or P is equal to a constant. So thus, it is clear that from the above discussion, for a system of two particles, in the absence of any external force, the total linear momentum of a system of two particle remain constant. For a system of two particles, the total momentum remain constant if there is no external force acting on it. I hope you have understood the concept of linear momentum, the conservation of linear momentum and then conservation of linear momentum in case of a system of